Hello you lovely people, welcome to the Geek of an Iron Page, and this is a Fallout 4 video, but it is unlike anything I have ever done before. This is a Fallout 4 character build video, to show you how to build a character for use in an explosives only run through. Because I had millions of requests, people in there, millions asked me, okay not, not millions then, perhaps thousands, that hundreds then, right, one, one person, one person asked me to do a Fallout 4 explosives only character build and I thought, do you know what, why not? The thing is, I don't really know how to make these types of videos. I'm not really very good at this, I've never done this before, so I'll just waffle on and if it's useful, awesome, if not, then never mind, I'm sure you'll probably work it out. But hopefully this can be a useful guide for you if you want to build an explosives only character. And uh, yeah, give give my challenge a go because it's been quite fun. So as you can see right now in the background, Betty is there. Betty Boom, who is currently our character. She's the star of Fallout 4 Explosives Only. And she's going through, she's blowing stuff up, she's being cool. And yes, yeah, she is awesome. But there was once a time when Betty was not so powerful. She was not so good. She was scrabbling around as a level one character. She did not have any explosives and she did not really know what she was doing. So let's use the power of wibbly wobbly time travel and clever video editing to go all the way back to the start. There we go. There is Betty. That is Betty as she gets out the vault. She's not got her kind of cool fashionable glasses on. She's not got her kind of crazy wig thing on and she's not got the dress on. She just looks like ordinary, ordinary Betty before she could do anything cool. She's got no power armor, she's got no explosives. So yes, so how do we build an explosives only character? The first thing that's worth pointing out is what does explosives only actually mean for what I am talking about it here. So I'm talking hand thrown explosives only. So I'm not talking about rocket launchers and fat men, that's kind of cheating. No, we're talking about grenades, any grenade, mines, any mines, and molotovs. And later on, you will pick things up that you may have to make a judgment about yourself in terms of explosives only. So um, things like the, the Yangtze, the guy, the sort of ghoul sea captain, gives you a little kind of tracker thing that you can throw down and then he will launch a nuke at wherever you've thrown it if you're within range of uh, his ship, his uh, submarine. So does that count as an explosives only? It's a hand thrown thing. An explosion happens after you've thrown it. I would say yes, but you can make up your own rules for that. So yes, this is not for rocket launchers and fat men and things like that, missile launchers and all that kind of jazz. It is simply for grenades, mines, molotovs, which is all you will have early on. So let's go into the Pip-Boy and have a look at the special stats that we have. And people may notice that these are different to the ones that I actually started my explosives only run through with. And that's because I have learned, I have learned a few things on the way about this. And yeah, if, if I were to do it again, if I were to start now, having played up to whatever level I am now, 45 or something like that, I forget, but in mid 40 somewhere, uh, yeah, I do things a little bit differently, not radically differently, just a minor, minor tweak to some of these, uh, to some of the special stats. The easiest one, the easiest one for an explosives only build is luck one. We don't need luck for this. Luck is entirely to do with criticals and vats. And if you're using grenades in Fallout 4, you do not get criticals. We will not be having any vats action. The only reason you would use vats is to check the health of people and to see what kind of thing they are from a distance. But you can't actually throw grenades with vats unless I'm wrong. If someone can tell me how to do it without installing mods, please do, but I don't think it's possible. So look, you can leave at one. And look at a level of one does mean that you can have Fortune Finder, which is good. I don't know, ah, that's because I've not got a, a uh, perk ready to take, so I've not taken those yet. But yes, you can have Fortune Finder, which is good, because one of the things you will need on Explosives Only Journey is caps. You need caps to either buy explosives or buy the equipment required to craft explosives because explosives are not that ready to come by. So yes, you'll need monies and this is actually quite useful. In hindsight, I would have taken this probably earlier in my run through. I think I took it later than I possibly should have done. So yeah, look is the easiest one, a look of one. And then the rest, let's just go down in order. So strength three, strength three is good image. You can get armor from the off and yes, it's it gives you enough carry weight early on. Grenades only cost 0.5 and you're not going to be awash with grenades. So that should give you enough to have your armor, 
a decent set of armor early on until you can find some power armor. And uh, yeah, because it's not survival mode, it is very different. You don't need to worry about the weight of ammo and the weight of other bits and bobs and carrying water around and all that kind of stuff. So a strength of three is enough. It gives you armor, which is the primary thing you want it for, and it's enough carry weight to start you off with. Obviously, you can go find the bobbleheads, or you could increase it with other things. You can go and increase it with your perks if you so wished, if you want some more carry weight. But I think strength three at the start is absolutely fine. Perception is the key one. Perception you need at five for an explosives only build because five is demolitions expert. That gives you, where is it? Where's demolitions expert? Uh, there, no, there, no. Where is demolitions expert? One, two, three, four, it's there. Of course it is, demolitions expert. You need that. That is the first perk you should take because it allows you to craft explosives at any chemistry station. Without that, your character is utterly reliant on buying explosives, which means you have to have a lot of money because explosives are expensive. And yeah, you're not going to come by many. And if you have no explosives and explosives only run, you are pretty much screwed because otherwise you'll have to cheat and break the rules or you'll just die and kind of go back to another point and try again. So yeah, perception of five. I don't think you really need perception much more than that at any point during the game i don't think like stuff like this you don't need sniper because you can't have weapons with scopes that's a vats thing that's a vats thing you may want to put it up to six possibly you know, i mean you know 10 energy resistance if that's what you want to go down fine but i don't think you need it any more than five and i think as soon as you can get any of these so as soon as you're level 10 take the next one up level 22 take that one and level 34 take that that is, that is key for an explosives only build because this is all of your damage going up and you have to do that. Um, it's interesting to point out in terms of the things that actually do damage. Where it says there, it says the explosions do 25, well, your explosives do 25% more damage. However, that's not entirely true. Pulse grenades and pulse mines do not seem to be affected by demolitions expert. I don't know why, maybe it's because they don't actually explode they're more like a pulse, like a sort of electromagnetic pulse type thing. They do not go up. They do not have their damage increased. They will always stay at the base damage level. So they don't go up. Other stuff does, like pulse mines and frag grenades and frag mines and whatever. All the, all the other stuff seems to, um, but they do not. I need to check about molotovs possibly, but certainly the pulse mines and pulse grenades do not. So at some point you'll notice that they're becoming slightly less and less effective and eventually you just stop using them because there's no point. Okay, endurance. I would say, I, I didn't have this, I don't believe, at my, when I started with Betty, I think I had a higher endurance, but I would have endurance of six. That's absolutely fine. That gives you a lot of hit points. It gives you enough hit points to get by, and that's fine. I don't think you need anything else. Yes, it affects your total health and action point drain from sprinting. Action point drain from sprinting is quite important because there's a lot of running away and explosives only. Running away just to get distance to lob an explosive at someone. But I think six endurance is fine. It gives you enough. You can then, if you really wanted to, you could up it to seven later on. You get a bobblehead or use a perk, which would then give you adamantium skeleton, which reduces your limb damage, which if you're lobbing grenades round is quite useful. But yeah, I don't think it's, I don't think it's sort of key that you have it much higher than that. Charisma, now this, this is a sort of contentious one because there is no perfect build for this, really. And Charisma is where I sort of lopped points. So again, I, th I think Betty was slightly different. I think Betty might have had four Charisma when she started, but I've lowered it down to three. I would say three Charisma is plenty to start with. Uh, it's useful for barter uh, to get prices down, I suppose. And you can indeed take this cap collector and it also lets you talk your way out of certain bits but you can buff charisma with things you can find clothing and hats and glasses and whatever else you can drink beer to up your charisma when you need to make a speech check if you think hang on a minute key bit of a quest let's uh, just swig a couple of bottles of beer or whatever so, you know to give yourself a buff because you don't need charisma high all the time it's only when you're either bartering or speech checking so um yeah, I think a charisma of three is absolutely fine. Again, I'm going to do a uh, I'm going to do a survival mode character build, which is slightly different. I will just show you that at the end. It's slightly different, and the charisma for that is slightly different. But for a regular playthrough, if you're not on survival mode, I think a charisma of three is fine. It lets you get lone wanderer, which is particularly useful. 
So you take 15% less damage and you can increase your carry weight by 50. And again, that is something you should take fairly early on, I think, and try and increasing that as you go. Because yeah, if you're on your own, which you probably might want to be with explosives only because your companions tend to just run into the fight. They tend to sort of run blindly in. If you're throwing explosives around, your companions get caught in the blasts and then they will be down and out and they're no bloody use when they're lying on the floor. You're just going to stim pack them. It's all a bit tedious. So with an explosives only run through, you're more likely they're not going to be on your own. So Lone Wanderer becomes quite useful indeed. Intelligence. Now, Betty did not have this much intelligence when she started, but I think put intelligence up to seven, that is good. That is good simply for your experience points. The quicker you can get experience points, the quicker you level up, and the quicker you can earn those perks and also your special increases if you so wish. Uh, intelligence seven also means that because you've got uh, intelligence six, you can have science, which is down here somewhere. There it is. So you can start taking advantage of that, which is good for your base as well, if you want to do that, good for your settlements. But um, yeah, it means you can do stuff with the grenades. You can build more and varied grenades and things like that with science and the ranks obviously go up. I think you need science four to build plasma grenades. But yes, I think if you have science, you'll be able to start building some more grenade -y things, but primarily intelligence seven for the experience points, just so you can max out them as much as you can. And obviously you can then go to the library once you've got some explosives ready and then get the bobblehead from the library and that'll give you intelligence eight, which is good. So it's kind of, you know, a fairly sort of straightforward boost early on. Agility three. Again, the only reason I put agility three is so you can have sneak because sneaking is useful in some situations. If you can only throw explosives, if you can sneak by some people, then tremendous quids in. But yeah, I, other than that, that's the only reason it's at three. You don't really need vats to do anything. I mean, yes, all right, it affects the ability to sneak, but if you take sneak anyway, the sneak perk, then uh, yeah, it helps because you're uh, 20% harder to detect. And as it goes up, you can you know, barely, there you go. Engaging stealth causes distant enemies to lose you. So yes, you have a lot of power with sneak in the end, but yeah, you just become harder to detect with the skill. That thing I assume has a bearing on it. I actually don't know the mechanics of the, the sneak, sort of whether you get detected or not. But yeah, I don't think you need agility any any higher action points in vats you don't use vats anyway except to look at people so yeah agility of three is fine and then look as we said earlier of one so the key perks you're going to want to go for armorer you need armorer to upgrade your armor obviously that's fairly obvious but yeah that is important get that early on so you can start upgrading your armor because in explosives only there are going to be times when the explosions are going to go off near you or you're going to be on fire. So you want to have the stuff on your armor to either protect you from things that are exploding or make you fireproof or whatever. So that's a key one. Obviously, Demolitions Expert is quite important as well. You want that as early as you can. The first thing you should take is Demolitions Expert, uh, the first one, just so you can craft explosives. Obviously, Locksmith and things like Hacker are useful. You can get into uh, saves or computers or whatever. So that's quite useful. Lone Wanderer. Lone Wanderer is useful. That's quite important. I would take that early on. Potentially this as well. So Cap Collector combined with Fortune Finder are going to be useful because you're going to be buying either the explosives themselves or you're going to be going to the vendors and buying the junk to then craft them. And it does end up being quite expensive, particularly when you come in to buy like fertilizer and stuff like that and various other bits and bobs that they need and adhesive primarily and oil. Yeah, adhesive and oil are the big, the big areas. Fertilizer is okay, I don't think, but it's, yeah, it's adhesive and oil. So if you can take Cap Collector, uh, which is just there, so your buying and selling prices are better, so you can obviously sell all the guns and stuff you find, which is quite nice, and all the ammo, and then you can then find more caps on your journeys as well. That will help you in the long run. Medic could be useful in the early ones, just if you're using stim packs, that's quite handy. And then sneak, yes, just so you can sneak around and get, you know, get away with things a little bit. If you can sneak through a situation without having to throw your precious, precious explosives, because they will become precious early on. If you throw a grenade and it bats off a wall and it misses, and you've only got four grenades, it, it becomes very, very sad. You're, yeah, it's it's not a good thing. The, you're very precious commodity grenades early on. Um, 
And I think that is about it. I mean, yes, okay, granted, you could go down here. You could have Chemist if you wanted to, if that's kind of how you wanted to play it. Uh, science is used for Scrapper. I think Betty did have a point of Scrapper. Possibly shouldn't have really bothered because now I just sell stuff. I just sell stuff and sell weapons or whatever and then buy the junk rather than scrapping stuff myself. So yeah, in hindsight, I probably wouldn't have taken a point in that. And then yes, you're gonna find the bobbleheads as you go along, so they will increase anyway. And then yes, you can spend your perks on increasing these as it goes. So if you need a bit more carry weight, increase your strength. Uh, if you need a little bit of a charisma boost to help you with some, you know, some of the uh, character decisions and charm and whatever, then yeah, go for that. But you can boost charisma with stuff. So yes, you will play it your way and you'll work how it goes. Your endurance is quite good to have a bit higher as well, just for your hit points because you are going to blow yourself up with your own grenades. If you've ever watched any of my series, you will know that I've done that so many times. I blow myself up with fire and grenades and plasma mines and whatever, so countless, countless hundreds of times. So um, uh, yes, endurance is always a good thing if you want to upgrade that as well. So yeah, that's what I think. So there you go, as a, a quick final glance. I think that is a good build for explosives only for grenades mines molotovs three five six three seven three one is a good set of numbers for an explosives only run through on a regular playthrough so not survival however if you wanted to do survival we need to do something a little bit different those stats there are what I would recommend for an explosives only run through on survival mode. And if you're attempting that, my I, I tip my hat to you because you are insane. It's been hard enough doing an explosives only playthrough on very hard difficulty. So the most difficulty you can be without it being on survival mode. It's been challenging enough, particularly the early stuff. It's not so bad now. Now I'm on level 40 something, but the early days, it was an absolute nightmare. So to do it in survival mode as well would just be, it. oh goodness me, it would, it would be stressful to the extreme. So a strength of three. Now this is debatable in itself on, on a, a survival run because everything you hold has weight including ammo and ammo is one of the sources of cash that on the other mode it doesn't matter on a regular playthrough it doesn't matter because you can carry as much as you'd like you carry 12 billion rounds and be like yeah i've got loads of ammo what of it but in survival mode ammo has weight and so you can't carry it all round so in terms of strength three which is what it was previously then yeah you're gonna have to measure your carry weight a little bit the grenades and armor are going to be what you're going to be carrying around you're going to want to have as many grenades as you can or many explodey things as you can and then a decent set of armor but then oh, everything else everything else you're going to be very careful with perception five you'd need that to get your demolitions expert uh luck is one that's the same agility is three that's the same however these have all altered so i would put endurance at five which is okay you get you get hit points and that's absolutely fine i would put intelligence at six Again, that is fine. And then I would use the charisma. I would use the two points, so the points saved from endurance and the points saved from intelligence, put them into charisma. And that is because with charisma five, where's charisma? There, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, yes. Ah, that's what I was going to say. Yes. So you'd have charisma five. Then you would use the skill book. You would use your skill book, which I believe Betty can indeed go and find right now in her house. I don't even think we've got that far. Yes, this very skill book just here, the Your Special book, and improve your charisma up a point. So I think now you would get charisma six. With your charisma of six, you would be able to take on local leader, and then you'll be able to establish supply lines between your workshop settlements. Because you will not be able to just fast travel back to Sanctuary or whatever you want to call it and go, right, here's all my stuff. I shall craft myself some new explosives. If you're at the bottom of the map, if you're down on the south of the map, you will not be able to just go, yeah, just knit back up. It will take forever and you will come across people. So you're going to need to establish settlements and supply lines all over the Commonwealth. And when you think I'm running low on grenades, I need to go and craft some more. You'll be able to go to one of your nearby settlements. And because you've got local leader, you will be able to therefore use the power, the power of your kind of network of network of bases that are all supply line together and use them that way. 
Otherwise, you're just going to be in trouble. You're not going to be able to craft anything. You're going to have to literally craft things with what you're holding. And that's not very good because it requires very specific things. You, know, you don't want to be carrying around bags of fertilizer and aluminium and screws and whatever oil and adhesive because it all it's all carry weight it's all carry weight and in survival mode you don't have that much you can't carry too much stuff so yeah that's what i think you would do you'd set everything so you'd have three five 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 six three one and then you would use your skill book to upgrade the charisma not the skill book the your special book you know what i mean to six to allow you to get local leader but again even on survival mode the first thing you should do is get your perception uh, not to get perception, you should get, use your perception indeed, to uh, get demolitions expert. Because that's key. That means you can craft explosives, you can start becoming a little bit self-sufficient. Um, with a standard build, it depends on what your playstyle is, as to what you would use the your special book on. Would you use it on a point of endurance to give some more hit points? Would you use it on a point of strength to give some more carry weight? Perhaps a point of intelligence to get more experience points? I don't know. It depends on your playstyle and what you want. But certainly with a survival mode run, I would say do it, do it like it was. So three, five, five, five. No, yeah. Three, five, 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 three, one. And then up charisma. Was that right? Oh, I don't know anymore. See, I'm terrible at these sort of videos. Three, five, 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 six, three, one. It was, wasn't it? And then we used the uh, use the your special book to upgrade charisma. So yes, I think that's what you should do with a survival build. And then it's just off. It's just off out into the into the wilderness with you and see what you can do and see if you can survive. Uh, the back, the the little bag out the front. Let's see if we can find it. Let's just keep running. It's not a bag, is it? There's a, a bin or a, a post box or something along here. This will be your friend. If I haven't already been here, I don't know. I just reloaded an old save game of Betty's. So I don't know if this is going to have anything in or not. I don't know if I've got the explosives out of this. Nope. So there's two frag grenades in that trash can just as you're going to leave Sanctuary. So already you've got two things. You've got a couple of things that explode. If, look, that's how early on it is. It's telling me how to throw them. So... Yeah, that is it, I think. That's all you need to know. If you are trying it, good luck. If you're trying out survivor mode, there's something wrong with you and you possibly need to get out more. I don't know. If you do have a go on survivor mode, doing an explosive only run like I am doing, please do let me know. Please, please tell me if you're trying it and how you get on. I imagine it's going to be an absolute nightmare. If only for the crafting. If only for the fact that you can't just fast travel back to here, to Sanctuary, Boomtown, whatever, and go, right, there we go, here's all my stuff, craft, 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 brilliant, sorted, I've got a load of grenades, now I can go back armed, because it would just be a nightmare, so yeah, if you are, please comment and let me know, even if you're giving it a normal go, let me know how you're getting on, because I know a few people have actually had a go at the challenge now, I think, so yeah, let me know how you are getting on, and uh, hopefully that was of some use, it was a bit garbled and a little bit disorganised, but yeah, you know what, that's what you kind of expect when you come into the Geek Cupboard. So for now, thank you very much for joining me in the Geek Cupboard. And I will see you next time. Let's throw that at you. That might get you. That's a beautiful shot. Oh, that's a, that, this is an unpleasant angle, Trish. Can you just fall in the water, please? This is this is this is the best box. This is my favourite box of the game so far. Oh no 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 no! It, it is hurting me. It's hurting me a lot. Very uh, interesting way of doing your medical examinations. What Who's examining who? <laughs>